What a joy that you have found us for this podcast. How exciting it is to think that this spiritual message is going out to people around this planet. Whether your life is working at a peak level or whether it can use some enhancement, have I got the message for you today. So get a piece of paper, get ready to take notes, call a friend, have them watch this podcast also. Then you too can have something to talk about and take it to a deeper level. So enjoy. Here we go. Hey, good morning, Seaside! Wow, what a joy it is to be here with you on this fabulous day, this day where it is alive with orange. <laughs> and um, it's, um, it's, it's a fabulous day, I know it is. And one of the reasons I know that is because I've heard a lot of people talking about asking themselves that question all week long, will you grow? Will I grow? It has been in the forefront of many people's minds before they've uh, made a choice, a decision, when something big was in front of them, when something was little in front of them. It became a, a, a pivotal point of, am I going to grow to express something new? So um, will I take that next step? It is, uh, it's, it's been good. So today, everybody is wearing orange, and our trust is that when you see orange, you're inspired to think about this morning's message that you've yet to hear about, but I trust it will be good enough that when you see orange, it will prompt in your thinking this question, you know, may, am I making a healthy choice? This morning's message is making healthy choices. And so we've given everybody an orange footprint to put on your poster that you got last week. And if you weren't here last week, I encourage you to pick one up because the footprint is in your, in your um, program and hopefully it stays. There you go. So, making healthy choices. Um, you know, too many people end up giving their power away. They are feeling as if they are in a world where they don't have much say-so in their life. They're feeling this victim kind of thing going on. And what I'm here to do is to remind you that you are a co-creator with God. That you get to co-create in this world with a divine presence that is moving through you and you get to make that choice. Am I going to be a co-creative expression of the divine with the infinite possibilities or am I going to give my power away, which is not the healthiest of choices, to the situations that are there? Because there's something there, am I going to go, oh no, and give up? Or am I going to take charge of my life? Now if I have a rock sitting in my garden, a stone sitting in my garden, um, you know, I go over and I pick it up and get rid of it. Pretty simple. You know, I think about it, I notice it, I embrace it, I, I decide to move it, I go over, I bend over, I pick it up, and I physically get it out of there. It's that simple. Well, in our life, when a situation shows up in our world, we can make the healthy choice of assisting it out of our experience. You know, we get to notice that it's there, get to decide, you know what, I'm going to get rid of this situation. I embrace it by making the choice that I am going to remove it from my life and I get rid of it. And so I do that by saying, okay, Spirit, show me. You know, I begin to listen. Show me what it is I can do here. You know where it says, uh, you know, knock and it shall be open. Seek and you shall find. Ask and you shall be told. I got them all mixed up, but they were all in there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's okay. So. But anyway, as soon as you start seeking, you begin to find answers that will assist you to get that, that stone out of your garden. All of a sudden, books start jumping off the shelves. People start telling you things. You go on the internet, you start seeing all sorts of amazing things, and you, and you may be moved to go to a, a holistic practitioner or a spiritual practitioner or a medical practitioner. The beauty of religious science is that we believe that God is omnipresent, which means God is everywhere present, moving through the hands of doctors, moving through consciousness, moving through the different modalities that is there, but what religious science works is, with is in the realm of mind. And so when one goes to a spiritual practitioner, you work in the realm of mind, you work in the realm of consciousness, and I recommend always going to God first. Allow that spirit to move you to deal with the other modalities of healing, but go to God first in consciousness. Make that healthy choice of not giving your power away, but saying, okay, spirit, speak to me here. What am I to do? And religious science practitioners are fabulous. Today, we're going to do our annual uh, rededication of practitioners. Once a year, our practitioners publicly stand before us and say, hey, I commit myself to serving Spirit and Seaside and United Centers for Spiritual Living. We're, we're going to, to be doing that. And so, 
When we begin to see, hey, you know what, I could use some uh, shifting in my life and some changes, I want us to recognize that if you recognize you need change, just because you change doesn't necessarily mean that that change was good, right? I can give up hot fudge sundaes for banana splits, and, and even though that's good, that may not be the healthiest choice that I make. Only thing that change means is that there has been a shift, and there is something different than there was. And so you get to make the healthy choice and ask yourself, will I grow here? Am I willing to take the next step in my life? Or am I going to leave that stone there and just pray that's going to get rid of itself? I, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't doubt that it can happen. A, 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 a raccoon may come at night and pick it up and move it from my garden. I don't know. Or an earthquake may gobble it up. But I find it's a lot easier to take some action. But what happens is when we have those stones or those situations in our life, they assume our, consume our attention. We start focusing and seeing and our thoughts get smaller. I mean, have you ever seen those little um, pygmy horses in the parades? You know, they, they, it's like I thought they were Shetland ponies, but they're smaller and they're not Shetland ponies. And the way they get these pygmy horses is that they take the smallest horse and they breed it with the smallest horse. And then they take the smallest horse of those generations and they breed it with the smallest horse of that generation. They breed it with the smallest horse of this generation. And they keep getting it smaller and smaller and smaller. And that's what we do with our thoughts sometimes. We take our greatest fear and our smallest thought and all of a sudden we've got these pygmy thoughts going on in our head. <laughs> they keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller as opposed to expanding our consciousness. You know, we try to take this magnificent, spiritual, glorious, grand expression of God and squeeze it into this small box called personality. Ooh. <laughs> the small self that is totally unaware of the infinite possibilities. And as we begin to embrace those pygmy thoughts and not make healthy choices, we begin to shrink and shrink, and shrink, and create less room for the possibilities of the infinite spirit and its infinite wisdom to lift us to ever higher ground so we can take the next step. So you've got to ask yourself, will you grow? Are you willing to allow that spirit to pour forth through you, out from you, into this world, and into this life? Will you grow beyond that? You know, and it looks like here it is. This is what it looks like in situations that look maybe kind of turbulent to be filled with gratitude. Notice words of reconciliation coming out of your mouth when you want them to be quite wrathful. It's looking at people, places, and things that may not have made you really happy and be appreciative and look for the presence of God showing up there in the garden. It is beginning to see possibilities when others don't, as you begin to practice these tools of creation, to be co-creator with God, it will feel as if you're in somebody else's skin or somebody else's clothes, they're too big. But Ernest Holmes tells us that we will experience what it is we can embody. Okay, what you can embody. Jesus says it's done unto you as you believe. It's basically... Um, Taking like a pipe, a water pipe. Here you go. You take a one-inch water pipe, and you know what? That's as much water that's going to come through that pipe as one inch of water. That's what we get to do. We can't hope we're going to get two inches of water through a one-inch water pipe. It doesn't work that way. It's done unto you as you believe. And this is why I'm saying, will you grow? I'll tell you, I watched them build my house, and I've got a big old water pipe going down the center of my street. I've seen it. And I've got this, I don't know if it's one inch or two inch, but it is a small water pipe tapping into that big one. And that's all the water that's going to come into my house. I don't care how much I pray over it, that's the size of the pipe that's coming into my house with water. And if I want more pressure, tough. <laughs> so how big a pipe do you have plugging into the infinite reservoir of God? Are you willing to grow with it? Are you willing to take the next step? Are you willing to actually bend over, get off your meditation but, and to take some action in your life to take that next step. <clears throat> Maya Angelou uh, talks, uh, talks about when she was a little girl growing up, um, she worked in her grandmother's uh, store, probably like a little country store for that matter. It was in Stamps, Arkansas. And she said that whenever there was a whiner or complainer that would come into her store, her grandmother would call her over and say, watch this. And then would come this uh, chronic complainer. And grandma would say, 
hey, Brother Thompson, you know, how's it going? He'd go, oh, no, well, you know, it's summer, and you know how hot it is, and I, it's just frazzling me up one side and down the other. This heat is going to kill me. And she'd just cross her arms and go, uh-huh, thank you. And she'd look at Maya and give her the eye. Another complainer, whiner would come in, say, hey, how's it going there? And he would say, oh, the plowing is just miserable. It is just that stubborn earth has no reason. You know, that mule is just not thinking. You know, my hands are continuously sore, never goes away. The dirt in my nose and my face and my ears. I'd rather die than have to plow any more field. And she'd just cross her arms and look at Maya. And when they'd go, she would take Maya and place her right in front of her face. My Angela says, my grandmother told me this story a thousand times. But she says... You know, there are people who went to bed last night that didn't get up this morning. I don't care if they were rich or poor, white or black. They didn't get up this morning. Their bed became their, their deathbed, their, their cold uh, table. Their sheets wrapped them for the rest of their being. Do you know how much they would give to rise from the dead to be able to have five more minutes of this weather or ten more minutes to be able to plow? So don't you ever be ungrateful. If you don't like something, you change it. And if you can't change it, change your thinking, sister. <laughs> <laughs> So I am here to remind us to make healthy choices in our life, to change our thinking if we can't change that situation, that we are here to grow, to expand and be a co-creator with the expression of God, that we can choose what size pipe we want to tap into the infinite. You know, you're going to have your complainers and you're going to have those that make you feel good. Oscar Wilde said, there are some people that make you happy whenever or wherever they go. And there are others who make you happy whenever they leave. (laughs) (laughs) Choice is yours. Choice is yours to make those healthy choices in your life. Because we're in a society that's moving quick. It's fast. That is high-paced, high-action. We have got the cell phones, the email, the websites. Um, we, we have got the access to the computers. We have got the microwave. We have got air travel. We have got... A, Highway, I think there's 18 lanes across right now at the merge on the five, and we have got traffic jams there. We have got air conditioner. We have condos without yards. We have um, fast food, TV dinners, processed food, and people are wondering why they have lost touch with their nature and their true natural self. (laughs) It is showing up in people's lives. And in their body, it is showing up in their body. Their body is screaming to them. And they wonder why they're not in touch. It's because they have shut it down and it shows up as chronic pain, chronic illness, chronic fatigue, migraines, headaches, stomach aches, ulcers, high blood pressure, heart palpitations, heart attacks, and high cholesterol. You know, I could go on. Stress, anxiety. It it is because of this high pace, people are not slowing down. And to combat that, what do they do? We spend literally billions, tens of billions of dollars on aspirin, uh, 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 whatever makes heartburn go away. We, we spend it on sleeping aids. We spend it on uh, laxatives, alcohol, n- uh, nicotine to try to quiet down, forgetting that we are in this natural expression, this body that is, na- is natural. Hippocrates, the father, the father of modern medicine said that let food be your medicine. And let medicine be your food. It is about the diet. You want to make healthy choices. You've got to get your body in a place so it becomes a receptive instrument so it can hear the vibration, it can feel the vibration of God. But you've got to be careful of diets. You know, I I love what Richard Simmons says, this wild, wacky uh, health guru guy. You've probably seen him on TV. Um, But he says, I don't like diets because in it, it has... Or he doesn't like diets because dye is in it. <laughs> yeah. Dye is in it. Yeah. And so take a look at what you're eating. 
you know, see what's there. Because take a look at, at our, our society. You know, ever since they brought the soda fountains in and the fast food restaurants, you know, the cholesterol has gone up. The obesity in children is higher than ever before. The, um, the hyperactivity and the, uh, the dysfunction and the ability to, to focus in for our children has never been higher. And I believe it is, and it is scientifically shown, it's a direct result of um, high sugar and uh, no value in the calories that they're getting. And so what is it we eat? Let's take a look. You know, I'm not a nutritionist, but what I, what I know is that we should eat things that are fresh, not processed, not packaged. You know, our taste buds are shot with all the salt and the sugar. Then we're left with cravings for salt and sugar. You know, kids are sitting there thinking about a cookie instead of their schoolwork because their head is thinking about food. It's like adults with, with alcohol. You know, in that middle of the afternoon, they start thinking about the evening cocktail. People sitting here thinking about, you know, can't get, wait to get out of here so they can have their Sunday drink. <laughs> You know, it's that, that craving. <laughs> Maybe not here. <laughs> but we, we, are, we are like an, the animals, you know, they, they know how to eat, what to eat. For the most part, they don't overeat. They make healthy choices. I mean, I've seen a few chubby dogs, but other... other <laughs> <laughs> my dad's duchess. <laughs> um, but other, you know... You know, take a look at your, if you've ever had insects in your, like, pantry or your drawers, I'm sure you haven't, but if you have, have you noticed that those little insects or bugs, they only go after the healthy food? You know, they eat the organic stuff, they eat the nuts, they eat the rice, they eat the grains. You know, I've never seen them eating uh, processed cereal. You know, they go after the natural sugar. I've never watched an ant carrying out on his back a pack of saccharin for his li little thing. <laughs> They stay away from the chemical stuff. They're making healthy choices because they're in tune with their divine nature. So, what do we eat? Oh, fruits and vegetables that have been uh, not organically grown. It just, it, you know, it, it's fresh. You know, organic, whole food just makes sense. You know, chemicals and pesticides that are used to kill insects just doesn't seem right for my body. I mean, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to figure if you're eating some poison that is meant to kill things, it's not healthy for you. Think about that. And yet we have over 500,000 legal chemicals and pesticides we use on our fruits and our vegetables. And so, you know, we stop DDT. Isn't that great? That's beautiful. I, that's wonderful. Third world countries still use it. You ever stop to wonder where our fruit and vegetables come from in the middle of winter? Those gorgeous looking things? Remember, the, I've talked about the classic from the 60s, uh, Rachel Carson's book, uh, Silent Spring. You know, it just, it just brings home what it's like in the springtime and there's no birds singing anymore. You know, it would be sad. And so evolution is what comes about when we choose to choose differently. When we choose to choose differently, we cannot bring into the evolution some of those things from the past. Some of the past does not belong in the evolution of your life and your world. And so a lot of people choose not to move forward because they're afraid of losing some of those things. You've got to be willing to let it go. I've watched people who are afraid to let go even the things they don't like because it's familiar. And so when you step into that place of evolution, revolution, transformation, call it what you want, it, it means that you can't bring some of those things from the past, which is like you know, old tapes, old stories, some of the material stuff, uh, you know, paradigms, some of your thinking. When you stand new, you know what? You just may not be recognized for who you were. And are you able to stand in the truth of your new healthy choices when people throw your old past in your face? Are you able to hold on to the vision of that bright new possibility in the future that stands before you? That wonderful thing. Are you able to be in tune and in touch enough with, with who you are, the spirit that your body is not screaming for the salt or the sugar, that is not caught up in the pain or the fear of the rock that is there, but you are able to be quiet enough to hear to make the right healthy choice so you are growing and taking the next step in your life and blessing those around you. Some of the choices you make may not make sense. 
but they're right. Wonderful story. Um, from Sing Sing Prison, 1921 was known as the, probably the toughest uh, um, uh, penitentiary that we had in the United States. And in 1921, they brought in a new warden, Louis Loss. And um, when he came in, the, um, it was just a, it was a nasty place. And through his 20-year tenure, it got transformed into such an expression of, um, of what is possible within the rehabilitation centers that people studied it for its humanitarian approach to the rehabilitation process. And when people would ask Lewis what was the secret, he said, it was my wife, my wife Catherine. Because when he started there in 1921, um, she was a young mom of, of three children, and they told her that you shall ne- should never step set, step, put a foot inside <laughs> that penitentiary. And she said, thank you for that. And when they had their first basketball game in prison, she walked into the gym with her three children, and she sat down among the inmates and watched the game. She took upon herself to read the inmates' files and to find out who they were as human beings, to care about them. She found one who was blind, and she asked him if he could read Braille, and he said, what's Braille? She taught him how to read Braille, and years later, he would be weeping for her. She found another individual who was deaf. She learned how to sign. They said among the inmates, they said she was the walking incarnation of the Christ within that prison. In 1937, Catherine died in an automobile accident. And, um, and the warden, Louis Laws, didn't come in that next day. And the inmates knew, they knew that something happened. So the assistant warden stepped in. And the next day, when the assistant warden was walking the grounds early in the morning for his walk, he noticed all the inmates, the toughest, meanest, nastiest-looking group of guys on the planet, all standing at the front gate. And when he walked up to them, he saw tears coming down their face. And he knew that they knew that her body was being shown in their home three-quarters of a mile away. And he looked at them and said, All right, men, I'll tell you what. I know you loved Catherine, and I'm going to go ahead and let you out but make sure you come back tonight. (laughs) He went ahead and opened up the gate and allowed all those guys out without a guard. And those prisoners paraded three quarters of a mile and lined up outside of their house to wait their turn to take one last final viewing of Catherine and pay their respects. And all of them returned that night. Every one of them returned without a guard. Sounds like a good choice he made. But from the outside, that may not have seemed like the smartest move. But when you are in touch with that divine vibration, that divine resonance of your being, when you are there, you'll come to realize that healing is not done by power and might and force, but rather healing is a result of love. Healing is a result of compassion. Healing is a result of opening up to that divine presence to be moved. It is being free of the callings of your body because it is out of balance. It is being free of the, being the callings of the world around you because you are not attached to them. It is not calling in a super God to heal a situation and to make it right or to move that rock without my action, but rather it is stepping into the stillness of one's being, stepping into the stillness of one's essence and listening and feeling and knowing how it is I can grow in this very moment when anything presents itself. Am I willing to say, will I grow here? Will I take the next step? If I am committed to making that healthy choice and what is presented to me is an opportunity to reveal my character and my true self and my higher self and healing will happen in my life and in my body because that is the natural unfoldment of wholeness. Nothing needs to be healed. Healing conjures up the concept that there's something wrong. Wholeness is the honoring that it is whole and perfect now. Voltaire said that healing is the result of amusing the patient while nature 
cures the disease. Your body knows how to right itself. We see it in the animal world all the time. There's a Zen saying, it says, sit quietly, do nothing. Spring comes, grass grows all by itself. If we could just learn to partner with spirit, we become the co-creative expression of the divine through our healthy choices. Because we have learned to listen. We have learned to become still. We have learned to recognize that the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, is right here within me. I don't have to go anywhere. If I can just learn to be still and get quiet, I'll recognize that the many mansions are right where I am in this omni presence of God is the fullness for I am with you always is what we are told I am with you to the very end is what we are told I will not leave you I will not leave you comfortless is what we are told am I able to step into that kingdom right here and not have to tell God move this rock change my life watch these inmates make a difference stop this eating of the sugar and salt am I able just to enter into that kingdom and be a transparency through which the spirit moves and let it move me because as we have evolved into the metaphysical era we have been taught and and have learned how to exchange a temporal experience of of uh, of lack for abundance or the temporal experience of disease for health or how to change unemployment into employment or any one of those but as one moves into the mystical connection as one moves into that heavenly kingdom into that fourth dimensional awareness one recognizes that I need not tell God anything but rather I must allow it to pour forth through me in this fourth dimension it all is already in this kingdom of God it has already been given and the healthy choices are already there for me to say yes to but I must become the place in which spirit pours out it's not anything I can get on the outside the abundance the wealth the health the wholeness has to pour forth from me I am the place through which it comes into form I'm the place where heaven meets earth I am that conduit through which the infinite begins to take form and it forms because of my consciousness it forms because the pipe I have chosen is no longer one inch but it is an open vessel through which God flows and I challenge us to make the healthy choices to allow this to be true for our very life as we take the next step in our life All right. Again, a lot of heart and soul and passion. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I give, and all that I receive. I am prosperous now. Hey, I trust you enjoyed that podcast. It was very exciting to be able to create that and to know that there are people like you all around the world that are observing and integrating these spiritual principles into their life. And so if you enjoyed it, what I'd like to do is encourage you to tell a friend or bring several friends together and watch another one of these podcasts. And then afterwards, take some time to talk about the spiritual principles, to talk about the stories and what significance they have and relevance they have in your life. What then happens is it moves to a deeper and deeper level in your world. It becomes real and assists you to create the freedom in your life that your heart and soul so desire. 